the challenge of the Yukon. On King, on your husky. The Wonder Dog King, swiftest and strongest of Eskimo lead dogs, blazes the trail through storm and snow for Sergeant Preston as he meets the challenge of the Yukon. Sergeant Preston was typical of the small band of Northwest Mounted Police who preserved law and order in the new Northwest country, where the greed for wealth and power led to frequent violence and bloodshed. But in spite of the odds against them, Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog King met that challenge, and justice ruled triumphant. Inspector Grayson of the Northwest Mounted Police looked approvingly at the tall, clear-eyed young Mountie who stood before him with a big gray dog at his side. Sergeant Preston's face had lost some of its ruddy outdoor look, and his right arm was supported by a sling from his shoulder. Inspector Grayson smiled. (laughs) Sit down, Preston. It's good to see you out of the hospital. The whole force has been worried about you. Thank you, sir. Nice to be on my feet again. I, uh... Don't like hospitals, and neither does King. <laughs> I understand that they had quite a time with that dog of yours. He refused to be separated from you. Oh, I want to thank you, Inspector, for sending over the order to let him stay in my room. Well, he was a lot less trouble after they let him in. <laughs> now, um, do you feel strong enough to give me a detailed report of your capture of Red Wilson? Yes, sir. I'm sorry I wasn't able to bring in his partner, Chico Pete. Well, it saved the government the expense of a trial and a hanging, I guess. But, uh... There are a few things that need clearing up, however. I understand that you refuse to prefer charges against this man, uh, uh, Grizzly Martin, even though he tried to murder you. That's true, sir. Well, let's start from the beginning. I have part of the report here. Red Wilson and Chico Pete were wanted for the murder of two Eskimos and Corporal Rogers of the Mount of Police. Oh, we should have put another man on that job, would you, Sergeant? Sorry, there was no one available at the time. Red and Chico are ruthless killers. Well, as it happened, sir, I got all the help I needed. Uh, You were close on their trail in Selkirk, weren't you? Yes, sir. I almost caught them there. A friend of mine in Selkirk let me have his cabin while he went off for two days hunting. I was sitting alone in the cabin with King and started the door to let him out for bedtime. When I opened the door, there stood one of the biggest men I'd ever seen. Hmm. He was over six feet six and correspondingly wide. In his fur parka, he looked like a big grizzly bear. A storm was beginning, and the wind had drowned out his footsteps. The hair on King's back grew. Down, King. Well, I guess I didn't hear you knock. I didn't knock. Did you want to see me about something? Yes. I was just letting my dog out for a few minutes. He's a nice dog. Let him go out. I want to talk to you. All right. Step in and sit down. Go on, King. Go out, boy. trouble? I want my dog back. Your dog? Did you lose him? You got him. What? What are you talking about? I want him back now. But what kind of a dog is he? I don't know what you're talking about. They said you'd say that. They? Who? If you don't give him back, I'm going to kill you. But I haven't got your dog. Tell me where he is or I'm going to kill you now. Wait a minute. I'll help you find him. Listen to me. So you won't tell me. Then I'm going to kill you. My gun was in its holster on my cot and beyond my reach. He came toward me slowly, and I gave him a smashing blow in the face, but it was like hitting a stone wall. He didn't even stagger. Hmm. His fur parka protected his body, and in spite of everything I could do, I felt his hands on my throat. With the last bit of breath I had, I yelled for King. I don't know why, because he was outside and the door was shut. But just as everything went black, I heard a crash of glass, and if it were far away, I heard the roar of King's attack. No. No, don't bite me. Get away. Get down, I say. I won't hurt him. I grabbed the edge of the table to pull myself up. That man could kill King. He could hit him over the head with a chair or choke him with one of those powerful hands. Then, when my vision cleared, I saw him. He stood in the corner, the chair in front of him, holding the dog off, but not hitting him. Where? His hands dripped blood, and his parka was in shreds where King had attacked him. His face looked hurt and worried. My voice sounded like a croak. King! Back, fella, back! But watch him, boy! He bit me. 
He's the first dog ever bit me. You didn't try to kill him, did you? No. I wouldn't hurt a dog. Dogs like me, and I like dogs. That's why I was mad. Because you won't tell me where you put Blackie. Well, this is my dog. I wouldn't want yours. I didn't take Blackie. Why would I want your dog when I have this one? This dog likes you. Just the way Blackie likes me. He broke through the window to help you. Well, that proves he's my dog, doesn't it? That proves I didn't take yours. Yeah. I guess that's right. Your, uh, your hands are bitten. You better let me fix them. Blackie would have done that, too, if someone tried to kill me. Why, of course he would. Don King, back fella. It's all right now. Oh, uh, come here and sit down beside the table. I'll get some bandages. He's a good dog. I like your dog. What's your name? Martin. Grizzly Martin. Grizzly Martin. Now, well, let's have a look at that hand. You, uh... Live around here? Yeah. Me and Blackie. That is, till he went away. We live all alone. We never see people much. They were the first ones for a long time. They? Who? The men who said you took my dog. They came two days ago. Oh? They wanted to buy Blackie. I told him I'd kill anyone who tried to take him. Then the next day, Blackie was gone. One of the men came to my cabin. He said you had stolen him. He showed me where you lived. What did these men look like? One was white. One was part Indian. And you say they've been here two days? Yes. They gave me money and I bought supplies for them. They gave me money for tobacco for myself. Now, now they've gone away. I knew then what had happened, sir. Red Wilson and Chico Pete had got there before I did, in spite of the shortcut I took. By chance, they'd found Grizzly. Because he wasn't normal mentally, he was easy to fool. And they figured they could kill you off, Sergeant, without doing it themselves. And they'd have succeeded, sir. Sandman for King and Grizzly's love for dogs. Did Red and Chico steal Grizzly's dog? That's what I figured, sir. I kept Grizzly there with me until morning. Hmm. Weren't you afraid of him? Well, he was childish and harmless, except for that one thing, his dog. It was the one thing he loved. We started early the next morning to try to pick up the trail of Red and Chico. I questioned Grizzly on the way. Grizzly, can you remember from which direction these men came to your cabin? They always came from where the sun sets. And they must have been camped west of town. There was a snowfall yesterday. Should be able to pick up their tracks. I'll kill them if they took Blackie. Would you know Blackie's tracks if you saw them? Sure I would. Blackie's bigger than any dog I ever saw. And his front leg is lame. I'd know his tracks. We'll scour the country west of here. If we're lucky, we'll pick up their trail. Found their campsite west of town, but they'd left. Was there any sign of Grizzly's dog? Now, one of their dogs must have gone lame or something. They had a six-dog team, and one of the team was Blackie. Grizzly was wildly excited. There it is. There's this track. They've got Blackie. I'll kill them. I'll kill them. Don't get excited, Grizzly. I'll get Blackie back for you. Now I want you to go home, back to your cabin. But I've got to catch them. They took Blackie. You must go back and take care of those hands of yours. Maybe days before I catch up with them. You can't go with me. I won't let you. You can't stop me. Oh, yes, I can. I have a gun, and you know the king won't let you hurt me. You can trust me, Grizzly. I promise you I'll bring Blackie back. You're a good man. They're bad. Maybe they'll kill you. I can take care of myself. Now, you go back and stay there till I come. I'll bring your dog to you. I should think you'd have welcomed this help, Sergeant. Well, sir, I wanted to bring Red and Chico back alive. Grizzly muttered to himself for a while, then turned and ambled off toward home like a huge Kodiak bear. Had Red and Chico headed for the border? Yes, sir. In order to get there the shortest way, they had to cross a mountain range. It was a treacherous trail and heavy going for the dogs going around and up the mountain. Hmm. We'd reached a point where the trail was narrow. The slope ran down at the side and ended in a sheer drop of two or three hundred feet. 
Suddenly, as we rounded a bend, King gave a sharp bark. At almost the same instant, a gun went off. I felt a stinging pain in my right shoulder that spun me around. As I fell, I heard King attack and saw him go over the side of the trail in a snarling heap with a man who had shot me. I prayed that he wouldn't go over the brink and tried to struggle to my feet. My right arm was helpless, and I was fumbling with my left hand for my gun, and suddenly... Lie still, Mountie. This time you'll die. Chico. Your dog may be kill red. Now I kill you. Do not reach for gun. How did you get back here, Chico? We know you come. We backtrack over topside. We see your team from Mountain Trail. Well, I guess this is it. I'll never be closer to death than I was at that moment as I stared into the rifle muzzle of Chico, the half-breed. He enjoyed my helplessness and waited a moment, looking at me with his little beady eyes like a snake before it strikes. And then suddenly, from around the bend behind him, there came a massive figure. It came soundlessly and swiftly, and Chico screamed in terror as Grizzly Martin picked him up like a sack of flour and hurled him over the slope. Grizzly! Uh, he... He's dead now. He went over the brink. How did you get here? I followed you. I knew they'd kill you. Where's King? Did he go over the ledge? No. He's there with the other one. They're beside the ledge. Now I'll kill the other one. No, Grizzly. Help me first. I'm shot. Get me to the sled. I'll I'll carry you. Oh, oh, be careful. It's my right shoulder. There. There. Now I'll kill the other one. Grizzly, no. He's my prisoner. We must take him back. He'll show us where Blackie is. If you kill him, you won't find your dogs. I must get Blackie. If you do as I say, you will. Get Red up from the side of the slope. If he's hurt, carry him. But uh, first get my gun out of the holster for me. I think I'm going to need it. And I imagine you did need it. Yes, sir. I did. Grizzly brought Red Wilson back up the slope onto the trail. He was badly shaken and bruised, but he could walk. And King was all right. They'd missed going over the edge by just a few feet. And King kept them there until I called to him. What? We went up the trail to the place where Red had left his dog team. Blackie was hitched to the sled, and that was when I needed my gun. Grizzly took one look at Blackie and turned on Red. He was wild with anger. You dirty rat! You used to whip on him! His head is cut! I break your neck! No, no, please, I didn't! It was Chico! I'm going to kill you! No, Grizzly! If you take a step toward Red, I'll shoot! But he hurt Blackie! His head is cut! It was Chico who hurt him. If I shoot you, there won't be anyone to take care of Blackie. He'd be lonesome without you. Yes. Yes, he would. You must help me, Grizzly. You must help me get home. Well, Sergeant, I must congratulate you. Bringing in a murderer with only a dog and a half wit to help you, and a bullet in you besides. It was easy after that, sir. Grizzly did everything I told him to. Red was so afraid of Grizzly and King that I had no trouble with him at all. Well, uh, uh, do you think it's safe leaving a man like Grizzly free? Oh, he's perfectly harmless, sir, if no one hurts his dog. By now, this story is spread, and I'm sure that no one will ever do that again. Grizzly saved my life, sir. I owe him his freedom. Very well, Sergeant. That's the way you want it. Now, you and King better take a well-earned rest for a while. Well, thank you, sir. I think my shoulder will be well in a week or so. Then we'll be back on the job. Won't we, King? These copyrighted dramas originate in the studios of WXYZ Detroit, and all characters, names, places, and incidents used are fictitious. They are sent to you each week at the same time. Q Holder speaking. <laughs>